Winston Lewis, uh, I retired as a senior chief of quartermaster. So anyhow, I was sent to the receiving station in San Francisco uh, for further transfer. And uh, then I began to find out what segregation was all about. Because every ship I went to, they apologetic, we can't take you, we just can't do this. Because all of the African American money was steward mates and cooks in the offices of the division. And you would be on the bridge, no, we can't take it, sorry. So I, I went to a number of ships, same thing. So finally, uh, I was transferred to Camp Aia in Hawaii. And when I got there, there were a whole group of African Americans who had been trained for various ratings, but couldn't, couldn't find a ship that would take them. And finally, they found a, a ship for me, which was down at Anawitak. <laughs> so they put me on this LCI in Hawaii. Next stop was out of me talking. Before we got out of the channel, I got sick. Cook came up and said, come on, come on down, I got something for you. Got some nice greasy pork chops. <laughs> Made me sick around today. But that was my final sickness, the only sickness in the Navy, for sea sickness. You know, so we had to get off the LCI about the size of this table. <laughs> and let me tell you, and a little rough seat went underneath, you know. Uh, we got down to Anwitak and I went to the ship. It was a, a PC, I think. But uh, the ship was, I, I enjoyed seeing the ship and realizing I was going to be on board that ship and I was going to have a job on that ship. And we were sort of roaming around the Pacific. Uh, we did uh, anti-submarine duties. Well, it was a small ship and there was a crew of about 75 people on board. And I slept in the forward compartment. And this was before air conditioning. So you would have to leave the, the hatch open to get some air. And if the ship ran into any, any, any kind of uh, rough weather, the bow would almost go underneath the water and come up. And when it did, it would take water and water would pour into the cabin, into the compartment. Wouldn't sink it or anything like that. Just make, things, make life a little more difficult. <laughs> and I, remember, I remember that laying there waiting, hoping the ship didn't go too much up and down, you know. But I remember that laying in bed and thinking about that. And, you know, my, get my bunk wet and all my so anyhow, that never happened, I guess. For some of the uh, campaigns that were going on, uh, the last, the last, we were in Tokyo, and we were getting ready to make an invasion of Japan, I guess. But then the sur surrender came. Uh, so I was in Tokyo at that time, and when the surrender came, my car went out of Missouri, or whatever. We weren't docked inside, outside patrolling, you know, anti-summer patrol. We were uh, just patrolling outside the entrance to Tokyo Harbor, anti-submarine position there. Uh, and then later that night we went into, our, into Tokyo Bay. You could hardly see the shore you know, because, you know, the piecing the bridge was about the height of the, that mirror right there, so you didn't, you didn't have too much of a forward look out. Uh, but uh, the damage was unbelievable. I mean, what damage I could see are really unbelievable. And then when we, we, we tied up at this pier, and some of us walked off and just, just to see, and it was, everything was damaged. Everything was damaged. Parts of brick, of buildings laying on the street. And uh, went ashore once and, and met some Japanese boys and girls about my age. And 
we, we talk by hands and then That's what I remember about it. But oh, they were very pleased to see us. Very pleased to see us. The girls wanted to know if we could get them any silk stockings. I didn't know where to go. Get silk stockings at that point. stern of that ship, looking out at the wake, and then looking at this rope that tied us to the line, wondering if we were ever going to get someplace. <laughs> uh, a houseboat. They had brought some houseboats to Tokyo for the Americans to live on, who were going to be stationed around there. <clears throat> and one of them had to go back to, to Panama. And uh, with great fortune, I managed to be on the tug that was a <laughs> <laughs> but what a trip that was. I mean, it must have been a month or longer at sea, moving along at about seven or eight knots, you know. Oh, oh. Every day, the same, same part of the ocean. There was never any difference, difference in the color of the water or anything. It was all the same, all the same. Are we ever going to get there? And I knew because I handled the charts. Even though I was a signalman, I did learn how to correct charts and you know, like that, which what the quartermasters did. Um, and I knew it was going to be a long time before we got to Panama. And then I finally, uh, I think in, in uh, Panama, put me on another ship. They sent me up to Los Angeles to San Diego. And then I was shipped. To uh, ask if I, wanted to, if I wanted to be discharged in California, and I said no. So I went back to New York and I was discharged in 1947, I think it was. Uh, 